Hey everybody, this is Dustin Mahaffey over at Geek Boy Repairs, and today we are going, going to go over uh, the UART tool, how to use it, as well as the CST or Console Service Toolkit, um, and the BWE software that comes, uh, that is the paid software. So just to kind of break everything down. You have the UART tool or UART tool. Uh, essentially, if you buy the one in my link description below, it, it's going to come with this flash drive looking thing, and then it'll also come uh, with these cables. Now, um, the cable should be good to use. The reason I didn't use them and I actually soldered wires to it directly uh, was because when I was trying to figure out how to use this tool, I kept getting uh, operation canceled, operation canceled. It wasn't working for me uh, and I was using these cables and what I actually did was I you know, did a continuity check from you know the PS5 where the cable was attached uh, to the actual adapter, and I was getting like 0 0.150 in diode mode, which is you know it's not a good connection. So what I did was to just simply solder wires right to it, um, and then I checked again, and I still got you know or I got full on uh, 0, 0.00, which is good. That means it has continuity. Um, it still didn't work for me. <laughs> like I was doing a couple of different things wrong and, and that's why I wanted to make this video just to make it easier for you guys to see exactly how you're supposed to do it. I know there's other videos out there, um, so if you don't like mine, you can always watch another one. Like, I also wanted to bring up one other thing. I'm dumb. I already have the CH341 programmer. I use it for MacBook repairs, you know, to pull the SPI off and to read it. Uh, this is the tool I use. If you have this, this works too. I didn't know this, but when I was actually talking to a buddy of mine, uh, he mentioned that the C, uh, CH341 works. If you look right here, you're going to have uh, maybe, it actually might be easier for you guys to see it underneath the scope here. So let's switch over and see if my scope will work. All right, so you see that's the wrong side, but you see what we're looking for is the TX, TX, RX, and ground. Those are the uh, what we need there. Uh, so you, if you do have the CH341, you can use this too. Um, however, for my video today, I am going to use this one, which is the one that I bought on Amazon. Uh, I like this one though, because if you look closely at it, you have a switch right here, okay? And that switch tr pretty much changes the voltage that it communicates on. So you, you start out, or when you first get it, it sits at five volts, uh, and then in the middle is 3.3 volts, and then the last one you have is 1.8 volts. Um, on MacBooks, a lot of the time it's 3.3 volts that they communicate on, or the SPI communicates on, um, and, and so is the PS5. So we're at this point, we're gonna stick it in the middle. All right, so for mine, I have the three solder uh, wires soldered to it, so I'm gonna show you how I had that, or how I put that. Okay, so you'll see mine. For the RX, I have the blue cable. For the TX, I have the yellow cable, and for ground, I have uh, the black cable, and essentially, I am just soldered, or I have just soldered it onto the back of the uh, prongs. That way, I don't mess up these prongs up here in case I ever need to use them to use the actual adapters that the unit came with, right? So, okay. So now that we have the tool ready to go, we have the three, uh, the three v three switch in the right position. We have the wires soldered. Now we're gonna jump over to my laptop. I'm actually gonna show you how to download this software because I did get a couple of questions on how to even get the software downloaded and up and running. Um, so we're gonna go hop over to the laptop now. All right, so if you look at my uh, computer here, you'll see I already have the BWE and the cons console service tool. Jesus, I can't talk today. But we're gonna go ahead and try to download them. So we're gonna go ahead and not open up that. That's not what I need. I need Chrome. And we are going to look up uh, console service tool for the PS5. And GitHub, I believe it's this one here. Yes, it is. Okay, so now we're at that we're on the GitHub page. Um, this is where it can get a little confusing for some people as they think they need to download this, which is actually just the master, right? Uh, that's not gonna do anything for you. Uh, what you wanna do is go over here and get the, um, the re under releases, right? You can click three more. Um, you know, you can get the beta. Looks like they're all betas except for the 1.001. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one and we're just going to download or click on console service tool here. All right, and that only takes a second to download. 
So we'll pretend that we already have that downloaded, which we do. So we're gonna go to my downloads and then we're going to see console service tool 1.02 here. And then you'll see the icon here, console service tool. What I did was just simply right click on it, uh, click show more options if you're in Windows 11, and then send to desktop to create a shortcut and just leave the program folder in the, uh, in the downloads folder. So now let's go ahead and open up console service tool. And we are going to be using the UART reader Okay, now you'll see what it says. It said um, loading errors list, attempting to load from server, okay. Compared cache version and server version, okay. And it said loaded 364 errors successfully. What that's telling me is that this program has already learned or already knows about 364 different errors. So if we get any of those errors, uh, it should actually tell us what the issue is with our console. And here's the cool thing about this tool. It actually, if you click on these images, or uh, it will tell you where you need to attach your tool. So it makes it very easy for you, okay? Now, beware because either my tool is mislabeled, all right, or these pictures are mislabeled. So my issue, uh, with why it would say, you know, operation canceled continuously was that uh, either my tool or uh, the this picture is mislabeled because I had to swap the TX and the RX cables uh, solder points on the console and then it worked right fine for me. Um, also, there was another thing I was doing wrong, but I'll get into that in just a second once we get to that point. Um, all right, so we're going to close this. All right, now what we're going to do is you'll see right now I don't have anything connected to my uh, computer and it just says when I click serial devices UART, if I do click on the de de detect device automatically auto, there is no options listed below. So if you're getting that, even when your tool is connected, there is something wrong, maybe a driver issue. Okay, uh, all right. So we're gonna put this to the side. So first we're gonna work with our console service tool, okay, and then we'll get in the BWE and see the differences. So at this point, I'm going to show you how to attach the tool to the console, although I feel like it was pretty self-explanatory based off the images we saw a moment ago, but we're gonna go ahead and grab one of these consoles here. Now again, these consoles I have already diagnosed. I already know what's going on with them and they're in the process of being repaired, either just waiting for parts or waiting for me to actually do something to it. Uh, so now they're, so they're, they will still show up codes on the UART. Okay, so we have the PS5 here. This is the level that you need to tear it down to. You don't have to take out all of the screws or anything like that, which is fantastic. It makes it a lot easier. And if you look, okay. So if we look under the scope here, what you'll see is the, the, the test points that we need to actually get to or look at are near our fan connector and our LED connector here. Um, so it's gonna be these three test points on this model, but they change depending on the model. And of course, uh, the program, like I mentioned to you, does show you that. You'll also notice that the Wi-Fi IC is gone off this PlayStation, and that's because when I ran this the first time on this unit, uh, it said, hey, you have a short um, near F0 or F7002 or something along those lines. And what do you know, I did have a short in that area. And while diagnosing where that short actually was on the console, I discovered it was the Wi-Fi IC. And at that point, I tried to just take the Wi-Fi IC off and see if I could get a booting console. I could not, it still did not boot, but that short was no longer there, which makes me think that, hey, you need the Wi-Fi IC on this model to boot. So we've got a Wi-Fi IC on the way, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get this console fixed. But enough of the rant on why this console is the way it is right now. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to connect uh, these points onto the PS5 with the adapter. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need is a little bit of flux. We'll just put a little bit of flux there. We're gonna attach our first cable. Get that set up there so it's not dragging down. Boop. All right, so we're gonna attach that one. Wait for our iron to get hot. Come on, iron. Beep. There we go. Iron's hot and it was hot enough to actually attach one of them already. So now we're going to do our blue cable in the center. And that one's good. Good and soldered. And now we're going to do our ground. Come on, ground. Don't be difficult. Don't be difficult. Bam. All right. Now we got 
all three soldered on there. So now that we have the tool attached to our console, we can go ahead and plug it in. Um, so what we'll do is we'll slide over here, put the PS5 over here to connect to my laptop. Bam. So now that's connected, what we're going to do is we are going to click read, make sure we have the uh, read codes error selected, okay? And then we're going to have, uh, then we're gonna check in the serial devices and you'll actually see USB serial port COM8 is uh, there now, so it's reading it, it's seeing the tool. And we're gonna go ahead and click run. We're gonna wait, we're gonna wait. Okay, this was my problem, all right? I was setting it up just like this, and I w it was not working for me. Okay, this was one of the problems I was having. Okay, so you, what you actually need to do is you need to plug in the console to power. So we'll plug the power cable into it. Okay, now that we, once we've got our console plugged in, now normally I just wait a second or two in and, and, and order for it to actually like the console to fully power on or get all the power to where it needs to be. I'm going to click run and then you will see right away it pops up with um, a bunch of different error messages. Okay, so what we'll have is the first one it says general power failure um, and that's a low priority and then you'll see the next thing is Wi-Fi or Bluetooth problem or failure. Okay. Now this actually, I didn't get this code before I removed the Wi-Fi IC. I got another one that said, hey, check for shorts um, around, uh, what was it, F002. And if you look here, I do have that on number five, I still have that. Now that line is no longer short, um, and it wasn't even that line on mine, it was a 3v3 line right next to it. And again, that was caused by the Wi-Fi IC itself. Uh, so I removed that, short went away, I have voltage there now, and I re it's still no power to the PS5, but I rerun this and it's telling me Wi-Fi or Bluetooth problem. I'm thinking in my head, hey, that's why this console isn't turning on. Uh, so bam, uh, we are good to go with that one. Now what we're going to do next is hop over to the BWE software, which is the paid software that kind of tells you exactly what's going on, or it's more descriptive, it has more code saved in it, uh, so you don't have to Google. Uh, like on this one, you wouldn't have to Google much anyway, simply because it kind of already had it, it already told you. So this is a, a, a bad example of why you should buy the paid software, right? Because the free one did its job. Um, so we're going to go ahead uh, anyway and, and close the BWE software, or close the console service tool. And we're going to open the BWE PS5 code reader. And it's going to do a bunch of different checks on it, which I'll probably blur out because it has my IP address and all that other good stuff. All right, so now you can see here, it says PS5 detected on COM8, which is fantastic. Um, so what we are going to do now is we are going to uh, click two for read the last 10 codes. And you'll see what pops up here. So our first issue is general power failure, PWM short circuit, which might, I mean, if that keeps popping up, um, I'm thinking that means that I'm still gonna have another problem even after I replace the Wi-Fi IC, but that will be a that will be a question for after I get my new Wi-Fi IC in. All right, and then last uh, the last error is no error. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we don't know. Maybe let's say that the power short on 5V line two. Is um is no longer there and it's reading an old error code. Let's say that we fix that and our PS5 is still not turning on. Well, all we need to do is click on three. The option number three is for clear error codes, and then it will uh, clear the error codes on the console. Did it actually do it? Let's see. Okay, and it said okay that worked. So we're gonna click return, and now what we're gonna do is go ahead and read the la or read the last code. Let's see or read the current error code. Let's see if there's anything in there now. It says no error. Okay, so now what, we're, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to turn on the console, okay? 
and see what happens. You see uh, that I got a beep there, but no light or anything like that. Now let's do, I'll go ahead and see if we can read the last error. No error. So again, it's gonna take a minute to give us the error. We're gonna do, this time we're gonna do two, like just read the last 10. Um, and then hopefully by the time it gives us those 10 no errors, yeah, we'll already have an error pop up. So it does say, it still says short, power short 5V line two and uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth problem failure. Okay, so it looks like for some reason, it's still showing that I have a short on that uh, 5V line. Uh, I did check, I don't have a short. That line is being generated. It is sitting at five volts. So I'm not exactly sure what that's about yet, but I will figure it out. Oh, and the fuse is good as well. Um, uh, I will figure it out once I actually get a Wi-Fi IC. So I'm gonna try to knock one of these problems out at a time. And the first one on my list is the uh, Wi-Fi IC. Okay, so that's really, that's that's it. That's how you use this tool. It's very simple, it's very straightforward, and, it, and it's gonna make your life easier. Now I worked on one um, yesterday, or what was it, Friday, when I actually made a post about it, um, and it had a bad encoder, right? It was beep on, no power, like it would respond to the power button every single time you pressed it. It would even respond to the eject button, no LED, uh, no video, nothing like that. So it wasn't fully turning on. Um, and what, what made me fall in love with this tool was that I was able to simply take the X or the, the Xbox, the PS5 apart to this level, which has the plate is still on here and, and you know all of the, not on this one in particular but all of the screws are in place and I'm able to just solder to these three points and I connected it to this tool and it told me hey your encoder is bad or your HDMI encoder is bad I was like perfect you know that's that's amazing I can go ahead and call my client and quote them a higher price now because that chip's expensive um, you know it's definitely a higher price uh, and the client can approve or decline and I don't even have to take apart the PS5 if they decline I can just easily put it back together and ship it back to them uh, so it's just a huge time saver and now on the one that had the encoder I did when I took it apart to do the repair I did check for shorts around the encoder like I always do and I did find a short so that console was repairable by me anyway no matter what, with the tool or without the tool, but what's great was it allowed me to diagnose within you know five minutes of having it on my bench without having to take apart all of these screws on the PS5. So uh, really worth it. Um, let's just run through one more. Let's do one more and see what it says um, a, 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 as an example. Okay, so we're gonna just quickly uh, pull off these cables real quick. Wait for my iron to get hot. There we go. Perfect. And then just put this back on here so keep everything together. Alright, take this one off. And this one you can see, maybe you can see, I haven't taken it apart at all. I have just done uh, the kind of the bare minimum to run this tool to tell me what's going on. So if we actually, I don't want to do this, just so you guys can see, I believe this one was uh, response to power button, blue light on, and then immediately off a second later. So let's see, just to make sure my memory is, uh, so you can see the blue light, and then it shuts off, right? So that's the issue we're having with this console, which I'm not sure about you guys, but in my history, these are these suck, right? These are hard to diagnose. I've never seen it just be a random short, maybe once or something like that, but these stink. So I was very happy to try this tool on this console. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's try it. Let's see what the free one and what the paid one says. All right, we got that soldered. Now we're gonna do is just as we did before. First, we're gonna start with the free one, so we're just gonna go ahead and quit this program. All right, we are connecting the PS5. We're going to the UART reader, and we are plugging in the PS5, the power. Now, I always like just to turn on the, or attempt to turn on the PS5. So I know that it's fully ready. It's got all the power running through the power rails that it needs to. And now we are going to click run on the read error codes. 
Okay. As you can see, we got a ton of error codes. It looks like um, at least, I don't know, 40 maybe, somewhere in here. There's a lot, right? And they all seem to say the same thing. Known, unknown, 412, power or short, report findings. Okay, this is kind of where the free one has its downfall. Because while, yes, it does give us an actual error code of 8080022, um, I could Google that, right? I could search in the Facebook groups for that error code, and eventually I would find what that error code means, right? It just takes more time. Um, now let's see what we get with the uh, paid tool uh, and see if it tells us our issue. So we're going to go ahead and close this, open up the paid tool. And once again, I will probably be blocking out all of the information that's popped up because it just gives my IP address, my hardware ID, stuff like that uh, for the licensing of this tool. So let's go ahead and wait for this to power on or fully boot up. All right, perfect. It looks like the BWE is ready. It says PS5 detected on COM8, perfect. And we're gonna do just what we did last time. We're gonna read the last 10 error codes and see what we get. Okay, bad communication between RAM and APU. After APU init, replace all or some RAM. Again, wow, this is fantastic. I love how it, it, it tells me. So it, essentially, let me break down what it's telling us here. It says, bad communication between APU and RAM. Now, if I just had that information, that's the only thing I had, then I would say, oh man, it could be the APU or it could be the RAM. I don't know, it could be either one at this point. It's not, I don't have enough information but it gives you more information. This is, I get overexcited about this stuff. It gives you more information that says, hey, after APU initialized. So after APU, to you, after APU is already trying to turn on, it's trying to signal signals, the RAM is, is not responding, right? So it says, hey, the APU is not the issue, even though there's no communication between APU and RAM, it's actually the RAM's fault. Now, bam, fell in love again, even after the HDMI thing. It's just, it's so cool to tell me, hey, look, your RAM is bad, some or all of them. Now I'm not, what I would probably do to repair this console is replace like one at a time until I get, until it actually boots and or just replace all of them. Um, but I don't have to take apart this console. I can call the client and be like, hey, this is gonna be almost double now because it's so much more work. And, and then the client can decide if they wanna do that repair. And again, all it took me was five minutes to unscrew those 10 screws on the top, solder these three wires and plug it into the computer. So it's definitely worth it in my opinion to purchase the paid version. Although the free version, if you don't work on that many consoles or you know you have more time to Google every single error code and help contribute to that paid soft or the free software, Software, uh, then the free software will get better and better. So definitely always worth, always, you know, always want to contribute uh, to, to free things, but I also want to, to contribute to people that put a lot of time and effort. And obviously these guys did when making this software. So it's definitely something I had no problem paying. I think it was like 130 uh, American dollars. Uh, it's like 180 Australian dollars. So uh, whatever that equals to but I love the tool. I definitely think it's worth it. It's free version or paid version. Definitely you guys should be diagnosing consoles this way. All right, rant over. This was supposed to be a five minute video and I think it's now a much longer one. Uh, so let's go ahead and end it. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week and I hope you've learned something from this.